Okay, so welcome to this uh, video in uh, the Cancer playlist. And in this video, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to discuss uh, the retinoblastoma protein, uh, which is really, really important in controlling a uh, checkpoint in the cell cycle. So the retinoblastoma protein. And basically, it's called the retinoblastoma protein because it's a protein that was found to be mutated in a certain type of cancer known as retinoblastoma. Okay, so the outline for this video is, first what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the cell cycle. Uh, and look at the different phases of the cell cycle. Then what we're going to do is look at the importance of the retinoblastoma protein in, the, in controlling the cell cycle. And uh, then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at um, how um, this can go wrong in hereditary and also non-hereditary retinoblastoma and what's happening there basically and how that leads to and how mutations in this protein lead to um, cancer Okay, right. So let's begin with the cell cycle then. So um, we have a cell here. So let's say this is a cell, and the cell is going to divide into two. Okay, so the process of dividing into two. So it divides into two daughter cells here, which are genetically identical. That process is known as the cell cycle, basically. And why is it called a cycle? Well, it's because these two daughter cells, they can go through the process again, basically. Uh, so they can then go through the process of splitting into two as well. So it's basically a process that goes round and round and round and round. And that's why it's known as the cell cycle, basically. Okay, so let's have a look at the different components. How does a cell actually split into two? Well, basically, what you start off with, the starting point, is that you go into this G1 phase, okay? So you are in G1 phase. And uh, you can interpret G1 to mean two different things. You can interpret it to mean the first gap phase. So some people will uh, interpret the G to mean gap phase, and this will be gap phase one. Or you can also interpret the G to mean growth phase, so gap phase or growth phase one. Okay, and basically in this uh, portion, what's happening is the cell is getting bigger. It's uh, it's cytoplasmic changes are occurring because obviously, um, if you are um, if you're going to split into two daughter cells, you need to have more cytoplasm, basically. So that's why it's called the growth phase, uh, because the cell is getting bigger. Right, okay. Then what happens is a very important phase. The next phase in this, growth, in this cell cycle is what's known as the S phase. So we'll call this S phase, and I think I should cover these in. Right, so um, to distinguish it, let's say this is growth phase one, G1 phase here. Uh, so that's the pink phase there. Then we'll have growth phase in green here. Sorry, synthesis phase, S phase in here. Okay, so this is the S phase. And S phase, as I've just said, stands for synthesis phase. And basically, this is the phase in which you um, copy your DNA. And once you've done that, uh, you are on the road to dividing, basically. So what's going to happen is, in the nucleus of your cell, so let's say this is your cell in G1 phase, okay? Basically, what's going to happen is that all the DNA is going to get copied. So you're going to now get uh, identical copies of all your DNA. So let me discuss this in a bit more detail. Where should we do it? Over here, let's say. So uh, in your genome, you have um, 48, uh, 46, sorry, 46 chromosomes, and they come in pairs. So you have, uh, let's say, chromosome 1 here, and you have two chromosome 1s. So let's say these are both chromosome 1s. And they are what are known as homologous pairs. So these are the homologous pair of chromosome 1. And basically, you have 23 pairs of chromosomes, basically. Okay, now, um, the homologous chromosomes, one of them comes from your mother, and one of them comes from your father, and they have basically the same genes on them. Uh, however, obviously, uh, they're not identical. One of them is going to be different to the other, so you might have different alleles of the genes 
in each socket, basically. So um, even though they're, they're making proteins that are very, very similar, and effectively they are doing the same role, they're not identical. They will have different sequences of organic bases, and they will make slightly different proteins, although overall they make similar proteins that are doing similar jobs. Right, so that's the concept of the homologous chromosomes. Now, when you uh, replicate all your DNA, what you are doing is you are replicating every single one of those 46 uh, chromosomes. So basically what then happens is to these two chromosome ones, but of course this happens for all 23 pairs, the chromosomes start looking like this. What they have is basically uh, an entire copy of themselves attached to themselves. And this was something that used to confuse me when I was um, when I was doing GCSE biology. I used to think that when you drew two chromosomes like that, that was the two homologous chromosomes, basically. But no, these are the sister chromatids together. So this one, when the, when the chromosomes copy themselves, they become these pairs like this, these X shapes. So these are what are known as sister chromatids. And basically, the two portions that are joined at the centromere, they are genetically identical to one another, sister chromatids. Okay, right. So, uh, basically, when you uh, copy all the genomic information in the cell, you go from having 46 chromosomes, which are these single sort of strands, and if you want to look at their structure in a bit more detail, they look more like this. They have two arms, a long arm here and a short arm here. The long arm is known as the Q arm, and I've ruined my picture of the cell cycle, and the short arm is known as the P arm. Okay. Uh, but what happens is they go to having these um, these pairs together, basically, known as sister chromatids. Right. So in S phase, you copy your genomic material, but you still have only one nucleus. You have not yet split the nucleus in two. So the nucleus just contains double the amount of genetic material. And it still is said to contain 46 chromosomes, but now the chromosomes are in these sister chromatids pairs, basically. Okay, right. So, um, what happens next? The next phase in the cell cycle is another growth or gap phase. So this is the G2 phase, uh, which stands for growth or gap phase 2. So growth or gap phase 2. And basically, again, this is a phase where the cell is getting bigger, it's copying, it's making more organelles, getting ready to divide, basically. Growth slash gap phase. Um, two. Right, okay. So I'll colour that in some colour and we'll have that in orange. And now comes the important bit, the actual bit where the cell starts to divide. The M phase follows. So I'll put this here. Okay, so the next connection here is the M phase. Okay, right, so this is the M phase which uh, some people interpret to mean as met uh, mitotic phase. Uh, but as we'll see, uh, there is uh, mitosis actually means the division of the nucleus rather than the division of the cell. So M phase actually includes mitosis, but also the actual division of the cell, which the proper name for which is cytokinesis. Okay, so M phase. And as I just told you, M phase consists really of two separate phases, which I'll distinguish here. So let's have um, one bit in pink of the M phase, in pink, uh, like so. And we'll have yellow as this little bit over here. Okay, right. So this, um, this red portion here is what I will refer to as mitosis. Okay, and this final portion up here I'll refer to as cytokinesis, and let me explain the difference between those two. Basically, what has happened so far is that we've copied the genomic material. All of the, um, all of the DNA has an exact replica of itself, so the chromosomes are existing in these sister chromatid formations. Now what is going to happen within the cell, in mitosis, what's going to happen is you're going to basically split the nucleus. So if this is the cell, here we have the nucleus, and it has these chromosomes, which are in this sister chromatid formation, which I'll just denote as Xs. Basically, what happens in mitosis is that you're going to split the nucleus into two, like so. So you're going to get a cell, temporarily, that has two nuclei in it, like so. And each of those nuclei only has 
uh, single chromosomes, basically. So the chromosomes aren't in the sister chromatid formation anymore. They've been split back down. So these are the two chromosome ones in their uh, sister chromatid formation, and these are the two uh, homologous chromosome ones. Right, okay, so that's the process of mitosis. And that's what I mean by this red portion of the cell cycle, okay? Mitosis. Uh, so mitosis literally means the splitting of the nucleus. Then the next process is actually splitting the entire cell in two. And that process is known as cytokinesis. So here we have one cell with its nucleus with its two homologous chromosome ones and another nucleus with its two homologous chromosome ones there. And this process is then known as cytokinesis. Okay, so cytokinesis refers to the process of the cell actually splitting into two, going from a state of having two nuclei uh, to actually splitting into two separate cells with one nucleus in each cell. Okay, so splitting into two daughter cells. Right. Okay, so um, we've discussed now the cell cycle, and in the next video what we'll do is we'll look at one of the key regulatory points for this, which is this, in, this transition from G1 phase, from this first growth phase, to this synthesis phase, because the copying of the DNA is really the major start of the cell cycle. G1 phase, it's, you're, you're, you're growing, but it's still backable out of. Once you've copied your DNA, you're then compelled to go through, well, you can stop and then, um, you can stop, but you don't want to continue with uh, sister chromatids. But really, once you've, once you have copied your DNA, you're on the road to, co uh, to completely dividing. So there's a key checkpoint that controls cellular division, which is this G1S checkpoint. So we'll discuss this G1S checkpoint, and we'll discuss how the retinoblastoma protein is involved in regulating uh, which cells go through this G1S checkpoint. Right, okay, so see you in the next video.